Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about the Funky Fresh Moss 36. We're going to go over my shooting impressions of the gun, some critiques, and some praises. Now, the thing you need to know about the Moss 36 is that it has a slightly shorter barrel than most of the short rifles around at the time. So the Moss 36 has a 575 millimeter barrel, so it's about 22.6 inches. Uh, a K90 AK has a 600 millimeter barrel, so that's like 23.6 inches. So I really like this barrel length. I think if you get too short, like if you get kind of close to that 18 inch mark, you're getting kind of excessive blast and excessive recoil in the gun. So I, I'm a fan of this rifle length a lot. Another thing I really like about the Moss 36 is the sling setup. This, this side sling setup on the Moss 36 is pretty much my ideal. Uh, it just has, you know, the, uh, the cutout in the stock with the bar. It doesn't have the keeper thing that goes through the stock like, uh, like German Mausers do. Um, this is very similar to, to other guns, like the way the, uh, the Swiss did their guns. Um, I really like this method. Um, also, in particular, I like these, uh, these French leather slings. They're, they're much wider than most other of their contemporary slings. Um, a, a wider sling doesn't sound like a big deal, but um, when you're carrying this gun around for a long period of time, you know, just that extra, you know, couple of millimeters of width, it really does add a lot of comfort when you're carrying this gun around. So I'm a big fan of the, uh, the French uh, sling setup. So you can't talk about the Moss 36 without talking about, uh, you know, these reaperture sights that a lot of people are just crazy about. And I'll have to admit, these sights are really nice. Um, I, I've heard Bloke on the Range critique when he shot at kind of a dim indoor range, uh, that, the, that the sight kind of was, you know, got a little dark. And I could kind of see that with the way that this reaperture sight is kind of hooded. Um, however, in the bright daylight, um, it just is really nice, um, especially with the, uh, the post-war uh, front sight hood setup. Um, it just kind of looks like you're looking through, looking through a hole, kind of looking through a hole at the front sight. Uh, it makes for a really nice, really nice uh, sight picture. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of it. Um, not a super big fan of the fact that this rear sight only goes down to 200 meters. You know, this, this gun was made in the 1930s. That just seems a little bit outdated, but it's not a huge deal. Um, that doesn't shoot that far off from like 100 meter uh, zero, but it's just kind of my, my one nitpick about the rear sight. Um, as long as it shoots straight, I don't care about the non-windage adjustable sights. Um, this gun shoots straight for me, so I don't care about that. I don't care about messing around with the windage. And then the next thing you have to talk about with the Moss 36 is this funky dogleg bolt handle. Um, kind of the only other gun I can think of that has a bolt handle similar design is the, uh, the 1917 here. Uh, but the 1917 kind of sweeps the bolt backwards, where on the Moss 36 it kind of goes uh, way far forwards. Um, I think in both instances that's meant so that you can kind of reach down with your middle finger and pull the trigger. So when you work the action it's a little bit faster. Um, I don't think that that necessarily works out really well when you're kind of running and gunning because if you have the gun from the shoulder and you're trying to work this action, now having your rear, your, uh, your right hand kind of on the pistol grip and holding this into your shoulder, it adds a great deal of stability where if you're just holding the bolt handle, um, it's really all the weight and everything is just on your left arm. I don't think that's the most stable way to hold the gun when you're kind of running around um, now, when you're at like a stationary position or shooting prone or something, yeah, I think, you know, just keeping your hand on there and working it and pulling the trigger with your middle finger kind of works out. So this dog leg bolt handle, it's not really conducive for, uh, for palming the bolt, sort of like, uh, like a lot of shooters do, where they would sort of put this uh, bolt knob in the palm of their hand, kind of work the bolt that way. It doesn't seem to work out very well that way. Uh, instead, you do kind of have to grip, you know, grip the, uh, grip the knob actually kind of with your, with your first few fingers in order to get the best results with it. However, if you're shooting from the shoulder, that's the way you're, you know, you want to be shooting either way. You don't see too many people palming bolts, you know, when shooting from the shoulder. Um, like you probably want to in combat, it's a little bit faster um, shooting it from the shoulder. So um, it's different, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, it, maybe if you, if you just trained in this and you just practice on the Moss 36, you know, you can get a handle of this and, you know, this could be a really fast gun in the right hands. Now, the next thing we have to talk about is these rear locking lugs. Uh, as you might know, I'm not a big fan of bolt action rifles that do not have front locking lugs. You know, I think front locking lugs, there's, there's a reason why they're on virtually all bolt actions and then all semi-autos. Um, front locking lugs just have a lot of mechanical advantage to them. 
Um, however, when you look at a lot of the bolt action designs that have rear locking lugs, those like kind of like the Lee Enfield, those are holdovers from uh, when the rifles used black powder and the rifles are just kind of changed to smokeless. Um, so the, the bolt strength on a lot of those is kind of maxed out where it's at. Um, however, the, the Moss 36, unlike virtually all other rear locking lug guns that I can think of right now, um, this gun was designed with rear locking lugs for smokeless ammo. So the fact that this gun was designed for a smokeless powder with rear locking lugs, you know, meant that the engineers designing this gun could kind of beef up the bolt to make it extra strong to kind of deal with, you know, the, the problems like stretching that, that comes along with these rear locking lugs. So a lot of those problems are kind of mitigated. And on the plus side, what I think you get with these rear locking lugs is a, uh, a smoother and a shorter action, which is, which is pretty nice for, for an overall shooting experience. Um, you know, there's, you know there, there's benefits to rear locking lug guns as well as, you know, getting muck and, and gunk in there. I kind of have a feeling a Moss 36 would fare pretty well in a mud test. So a lot of people talk about the Moss 36 and they kind of refer to it as being light and handy. Um, yeah, it's lighter than most guns. The Moss 36 is like 8.2 pounds. So it's, you know, maybe a pound or so uh, lighter than a gun like an SMLE or K98K. And a pound is a significant difference. Um, however, um, the gun feels pretty dense for the weight. Now in comparison, this K98A, um, even though it has a, uh, a, an inch longer barrel on it, uh, this is just under eight pounds. So, you know, this is a few, this is a few ounces lighter than the Moss 36. Um, and you really can tell that difference. It's, it's, it's a weird thing mentally that I can tell that this gun is much lighter, even though it's only a few ounces lighter. Um, just something about the handling and balance um, of the K98A. Um, it just feels better to me. Um, obviously, I'm a little biased. Now, a lot of people might point out that this weight comparison isn't really fair because the Moss 36 weight includes this, uh, this bayonet. And this is a pretty substantial you know, piece of steel. And the thing is, uh, this hunk of steel is pretty far out towards the end of your barrel. So you have a lot of you know, leverage working against you, pulling, you know, adding weight to the gun. And just right now, having the bayonet off of the gun this feels a lot better. And it's kind of a weird thing because it's such a small difference, like it's such a small amount of weight, but removing the bayonet really does make the gun, you know, feel a lot more light and handy. The Moss 36, it, in hand, it feels a lot more bulky. Um, obviously, the, uh, the Moss 36 is a lot taller of an action than most bolt actions. Um, uh, the plus side is it's a lot thinner than most. You know, this is thinner than most Mausers. Um, it's a nice thin action. But it's so tall, you know, there's, it's just kind of a funky feeling gun. So the fact that the Moss 36 doesn't have a safety, it's not that big of a deal to me. Um, I don't use the safety a whole lot when I'm at the range. It's pretty much either, you know, the gun is loaded and I'm actively shooting it, or the gun is like unloaded, you know, sitting on the table, maybe with the bolt open. So uh, safety is not a really big deal to me. So obviously it was French military doctrine that their bolt action rifles just didn't have safeties. Um, and I can kind of see the point of that. Um, now, like the Germans, their typical doctrine was that they would, you know, they load the rifle, they put one in the chamber, they put the safety on, and then they would sling the gun or whatever. So there'd be a round in the chamber, but the safety would be on. And then they would, you know, grab their gun and they would take the safety off and then shoot. Now, uh, a manipulation of the safety is a little bit more of like a fine motor skill. Uh, where this bolt handle, having to work the bolt handle is a little bit more of like a, a gross motor skill. So, uh, you know, maybe if you, you know, you're getting shot at or something and, you, and you're panicking, I think that it might be a lot more familiar to just go ahead and grab the bolt handle and just rack the action and then shoot instead of, you know, having to sort of grasp like a small safety and disengage the safety. So, um, I'm a little bit on the fence on whether or not like a safety on a bolt action is like that big of a deal. I mean, I prefer safety over no safety, but the fact that this doesn't have one, it's not that big of a deal. So the bolt disassembly on this gun is, is really nice. It's super, it's super fast. Um, it's really very reminiscent of an Arasaka. You pretty much just, you know, have to push in and rotate and just a couple pieces come out. Um, for a modern, you know, collector and shooter, it's a real easy setup for taking the bolt apart and cleaning. It's, it's pretty fast and easy. 
Um, even a Mauser seems kind of, kind of uh, complicated in comparison to something as simple as the Moss 36 Volt. So I think that's a pretty big plus of the design. The magazine follower is also kind of a quick detach. Um, so you just press this button here and the follower comes off the gun so you can unload it pretty fast. That's nice too. Not a lot of Mausers have that sort of um, quick emptying feature on, on the Mausers. So I think it's a nice little extra on the Moss 36. Now the 7.5 French cartridge is a pretty good round. Now it's not gonna be like the most easiest thing to find out there, but you know, thanks to Ian and this sort of renaissance on French guns, um, it's not like that difficult nowadays to, you know, to find it. There's a little bit of uh, Milserp 7.5 maybe still floating around out there that you could find. Um, but that might be one of your bigger issues with the gun is just kind of finding the ammo for it. Um, however, if you do, it's, it's a pleasant shooting ground. So overall, the Moss 36 is a really good mediocre rifle. You know, it's, it's a no frills design. Um, it's just meant to be, you know, strong and to be reliable. And that's pretty much it. This is just kind of a, a soldier proof design. You know, it's, it's, you, it's hard to take it apart because, you know, it was to keep soldiers from taking it apart. You know, this kind of was a bolt action that was meant to be soldier proof. And therefore it kind of doesn't have a lot of the features maybe that we would expect on other bolt action rifles. Um, but it's a pretty, but it's a pretty neat gun overall. Like say if you're maybe jumping on the bandwagon and you're looking at getting a Moss 36, um, I would definitely say do it. Um, it's a cool gun to have in the collection, kind of just to, to check that box. Um, if you can get one of the pre-war uh, Moss 36s that have a little bit of World War II history, um, that's an even bigger plus. You know, this is a post-war gun that was uh, that was parkerized. Pretty sure there's a few things I forgot to mention about the Moss 36. So if you can think of those things, go ahead and comment them. I'm curious to what you guys think about the Moss 36. Nathan Phillips, thank you so much for commenting always like you do. Thank you so much to everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.